Pre-adolescence is the childhood stage where your math problems start to get complicated, you get bullied in school, learn to say your first naughty word, and all of those unmemorable memories. But if you were born around the 2000s, tell me that you weren't a gamer. Tell me you weren't playing them bangers that came out during those years. Club Penguin? Oh my god, I vividly remember being the most tryhard penguin out there. Like, the game modes you play are so competitive. They got this dancing game thing where you click your arrow keys in order to hit some funky moves. Initially, there'd be like three to four penguins watching you, but as time progressed as well as your score, goodness. You better, you better bust up those moves, buddy. And then there's this ninja card game thing, which I think was the most popular game mode back in Club Penguin. It's basically like rock, paper, scissors, but with cards. You got water, fire, and snow cards with levels on it, and you pull out a card that you think would be strong enough to beat the other player's chosen card. So it's basically a game of pure luck, not skill. This is what they want you to think. In reality, all these 10 year olds have a fucking PhD in psychology, bruh. And then there's a fishing game mode, which was pretty lame. A uh, bean game where you're just being thrown bean bags from a truck, which you have to catch and place it safely on the left side. But again, as time progressed, the bean bags are being thrown very quickly. And that. Yo. Who, who the fuck is throwing? Pizza game, which I hated because it was unnecessarily so stressful. The thing used to move way too fast. And which madman eats five fishes on their pizza? Anyways, besides the game modes, Club Penguin was hella fun. Like, yeah. Okay, I'll be honest with you guys, I really don't remember anything else. I mean, th these little guys were cute. My penguin used to look like this. Entering random people's igloos to copy their home style was a common... Like, believe it or not, this this would be considered top 5 best igloos of all time back in the days. Unfortunately, the game got shut down in 2017 because of some negotiation with Disney or something. I don't know. Basically, a redefined version of Club Penguin was in the making that was going to replace the original game. But it really didn't live up to the expectations of us penguin clubbers. It's kind of the same outcome for Fantage. They just broke as hell so they took down the game. Anyways, Fantage! Hmm, this is another banger. Fantage is somewhat similar to Club Penguin, but involves little children flirting with each other. Man, I, I miss this game so much. I used to simultaneously play Fantage and Club Penguin at the time. The difference was I was more of a tryhard in Club Penguin, whereas I was trying to get laid in Fantage. Like, the selection of characters you could start off with were fine as hell. But there's always a limit to how attractive you could look in Fantage. All the items you could buy for your character, such as different hairstyles, boards, and clothing, are so expensive, bro. That's like at least four black dots on my screen that I'm spending money on. Take a look at this place. What, what am I looking at? How does little kid get that wings? I used to be so envious that I desperately needed my character to look ass cool in order to get a girlfriend. In fact, I was so desperate that I had to search up free Fantage Boy accounts on YouTube. And it worked! Like, believe it or not, most of these videos were legit. Like, they, they just give out the usernames and passwords for free, which was sick. What the fuck is that? Anyways, yeah, some accounts were good and even worked, but it was only a matter of time until some comedian says a naughty word and gets the account banned. I, I used to fucking hate them. Yeah, but this game holds a very deep place in my heart just like Club Penguin. Even even though I still vaguely remember what I did in either game. Um, there was fashion show. Yeah, the, the fashion show was fun, even though I sucked at it. The missions and game modes they had to offer were... Oh my god, the, the missions? They were something. Why are Fantage missions so scary and hard? Like, like I'm serious, they're, they're way too overwhelming for an 8 year old. Example, the fashion police mission. Basically, goofy looking robots were going wild stealing clothes for some reason, and we had to stop them. Dodging their attacks in midair was no easy task despite how easy it looks, and then, and then having a boss battle with Finkelstein? <laughs> <laughs> we had to fight Finkelstein, and for some reason, it was just hard for me, okay? Like, like what is even happening right now? I don't even know what's happening looking at this old YouTube footage. D did she just throw a screwdriver at him? But speaking of hard missions, Pop Tropica was in a whole nother dimension. Why are all Pop Tropica games so goddamn hard? In Goo Goo Gaga terms, Pop Tropica is an online role-playing game with Funko Pop toys traveling islands to complete hard-ass challenges with puzzles that I still don't think I would be able to solve to this day without the help of Think Noodles. Like, there is no way I would have been able to complete an island all by myself without the help of this man's walkthroughs. The thing I do appreciate about Pop Tropica is that it's honestly well-written. I guess. N not really, but I guess. I think it's challenging for a reason, unlike dodging missiles from three goofy looking robots, Pop Tropica makes an attempt to try and educate us kids. For example, the Time Tangled Island, where you basically have to go back in time and fix the past as certain important artifacts are like all over the place, which results in, uh, the end of the world apparently. So like you, as the player, get to go back to specific influential moments in history and like be the main character of the, of the story who saves the world. Honestly, now that I think about it, I really didn't care. Like, they had Thomas Jefferson and the Declaration of Independence in the game. 
Who cares? Bro, I was like 10. I didn't even know how to wash my ass. Anyways, Pop Tropica was fun. Can't really review the game as you should just play it yourself. The game is still up and I'm sure it's still standing stronger than ever. Not really, it's probably dead. These three games really made me happy. But not true robot unicorn attack. <sighs> I hate this game. This shit was so traumatizing. Whenever I see my older sister play this game, I run my ass out of there as fast as I can. Like you might be thinking, wow, what a nice starting menu page. It's so colorful and butterflies. Wow, a robot unicorn? No way, let me press Z to make my wishes come true. Wow, this is such a nice easy game i just have to jump and collect whatever whatever the hell that is okay wow it's much faster now i better be careful way too fast oh golly i died what the hell? do you see that D do you understand what i meant when i said this shit was traumatizing Ima imagine a little child stumble across rainbow unicorn attack and was instantly enthralled by its colorfulness that they had to play the game Imagine how they would react to oh this shit. God. Sims Free Play was fire. I felt like an actual adult playing that game on my mother's phone. Like building my home, farming, doing tasks that takes like 20 hours to complete, making love, building a family, making more love, watching them make love, watching our baby grow. It was very wholesome. But the thing is, it, it takes actual real time hours to complete a singular task. And if you know me, I really don't like that. So there was like this little glitch where you could change the date and time on your phone setting, which will then tell the game that you waited a particular amount of time for the task to finish. So, you know, I just I just I just get done with the tasks in instantly. These are like the only late and early 2010s games that I still remember right before my Minecraft era. You could even say I was obsessed with playing on those websites with a bunch of random little games. Like this is an example. Look at the amount of games they have. Fireboy and Water Girl was good. Um had to use my brain but it was fine it was easy <laughs> they got they got the imposter game as well no way let's see what else they have um there was plenty of games i used to play all of them even extreme makeover yeah this used to be this used to be my favorite Ice Queen back treatment Elsa game. Yikes, the young royal really hasn't taken very good care of herself lately. Can you help her out in the in Ice Queen back treatment? Okay guys, let's uh help Elsa out. Goodness fucking God damn Elsa, what happened to your back? Okay, what is this? We got a taser. Lovely. Bah. Next a drilling machine to get rid of whatever that is. Uh a scrapper? Yeah, yes, a scrapper. God, those are some big ass pimples now we paint her back with this stuff and then we wipe it off yay i'm, I'm having so much fun you that's you that's nasty the back looks better go to the next stage of the treatment oh it opens a new tab no way mommy cinderella body makeover <laughs> yep anyways basically i used to play all of these games as a child uh yeah, should I just end the video right now? Okay, thank you very much for your watch time. We're close to hitting 1k subscribers. Uh, you didn't ask? Okay, I love you. Bye-bye.